Hello and welcome back to the KCC channel, I'm Rob and I hope you are having a wonderful day today. Today we're jumping into some pro revenge. Our first story today comes to us from SC2 Super Jack. Mock the disabled? Justice is served many years later. Let's jump right in. This is a story about a piece of crap receiving their deserved karma several years later. Many years ago, I worked in the lovely career of retail. It's sadly normal for there to be a constant flow of shop scum that make you despise their existence, and there are those that are so horrific that what they do is burned into your mind forever. Fortunately, one of these unforgettable moments allowed me to exact my revenge. I had only worked in retail for one year in this newly built store and was starting to settle in, getting to know the great customers and understanding that some people shouldn't be allowed outside which, being a shy person who hates conflict, wasn't the best, but at least one of my customers was an absolutely adorable elderly lady who always made time to talk and was an absolute joy to be with. It had been some weeks since I had last seen her, but one morning I see her car park into the disabled parking bay, as she already has a blue badge. Only this time, she hobbled out of her car on crutches with a pot on her leg. I didn't have a chance to talk to her yet when a works truck, which did not have a blue disabled badge, pulled into the disabled space next to her and out jumped an early 40s builder with their teenage kid. Well, this little old lady was having none of this and must have absolutely massive balls of steel and stood up to this ignorant builder and politely informed them that they shouldn't be parking there as it's for the disabled and he doesn't have a badge. What happened next, I can't forget. This builder decided the best course of action was to humiliate and insult this poor elderly lady on crutches, accuse her of faking her disability, and claim the cast on her leg was a fake, and that she probably milks the benefit system for as much money as possible. Then, walks off putting on an overdramatic fake limp, laughing away with their teenage kid whilst the old lady stood there in shock. Sadly, being one who lacks courage, I did absolutely nothing about it, and that would stick with me forever. I tried feebly to ask a manager later to do something about it, but they didn't care or want to get involved. For years, I worked in this store, always seeing this scum builder come in and out. Fortunately, I never interacted with this scum builder, but I saw them often, and every time I did, I would always remember what they had done vividly. I would still see them park in the disabled bays and even got to the point where I would recognize them by the large blue Mercedes they drove. Seven years later, I was still working in this store and this scum was still parking in disabled and looking like an absolute C. Yet this year, I was blessed with good fortune and our store was outfitted with some absolutely joyful equipment. Due to the high number of complaints, our store set up a company to deal with the parking violations but instead of having external parties coming in and ticketing cars, the staff of the store were given the ticketing machine and it was our duty to go to the car park and record any cars that violated the parking rules. This was all done digitally and there would be no paper tickets upon the cars. This was brilliant. As soon as I found out, I knew what I was going to do. It didn't take long for me to learn how to use the machine and it certainly didn't take long for the opportunity to get revenge. And so it began. There were three rules for parking, and if you break these rules, there is a lovely 80 pound fine in return each time it happened. The first rule, no parking in disabled without a badge. And I know well that the scum builder is certainly violating this rule, and it wasn't long until I saw him next. And as soon as he entered the store, I quickly scurried out with the ticketing machine, and lo and behold, there was the oversized blue Mercedes in the closest disabled bay with no badge. I smashed them car details in with some well-shot photos and sent the report off so that they could receive a lovely letter of their fine they would be asked to pay. That's not enough though, but fortunately it takes weeks for them to finally receive the ticket, which grants me the opportunity to constantly ticket their parking violations. Because as you would expect, the scum would always park in disabled, and as I worked the front of the store, I would always know when they had parked. After ticketing their car dozens of times, 
the scum unfortunately learned their lesson as their oversized blue Mercedes no longer appeared in disabled parking bays. But as you expect, the scum would still be scum, and they would find their new parking space inside child parking. Rule 2, don't park inside child parking without a child. Had this scum gotten enough, I thought? Of course not. They haven't learned their lesson and continue to be a complete wanker and park in the child parking, which we didn't have many spaces for. At this point, I knew all their car details by heart and would gleefully fill out the ticket machine as I skipped over to their car, violating the child parking, and take all the photos needed for them, including shots of their car seats that bear no child seats in them. And, as it became routine, this once again carried on a few weeks more of tickets being created, and eventually, they started receiving the fines. Fortunately, me being me, I am completely invisible to others, and often looked over, and I have yet to be seen or caught. But as all good things must eventually come to an end, when the scum came into the shop, their blue turd automobile was no longer there in child parking or disabled. Has the scum finally learnt their lesson? Would you be surprised if they had not? As it didn't take me long to find them. Rule 3. You must park inside a marked bay. And what a surprise, the scum still manages to F this up. They would park over the line, taking two spaces up. Well, guess what? That's a job for me and my ticket machine. Trying to park inside taxi parking, but can't fit that big butt car in it? Boom, that ain't inside a marked bay and ka another ticket and fine for them. Have one single wheel slightly over the white line of a bay? Well, guess who technically broke the rule? That's right, Scumbag did. And there goes a few more weeks of fun, until eventually Scumbag runs out of ways that they can possibly break the rules, and our company hires externally to start ticketing cars. So my beloved weapon of justice goes to rest. Now, I know what people are probably going to say, that all these fines are not enforceable because of blah blah blah. But I honestly don't care for a few reasons. Firstly, I'm being paid to do this, so either way my time or money isn't wasted. Secondly, it did have an effect as they repeatedly changed their parking habits. And thirdly, even if they don't end up paying, they're still going to spend an F ton of the time and effort trying to overturn them over and over again, having to constantly be harassed by mail. Overall, if all the fines are counted separate and added up, they would have received thousands of pounds worth of fines building up over time for being scum. Cherry on top about three years later, I walk by this piece of scum on the car park and watch as they scream at some innocent dude in a high-vis jacket, accusing them for being the one giving them all the parking fines which put me at peace knowing this must have seriously got to them and cost them to still be raving mad after three years. Oh gee, look at that right there, builder guy. That's the consequences of your own actions. I guess you don't see those very often. Now, one thing I want to touch on is that the fine for parking in a disabled space without a placard, well, that's really, really low, as far as I'm concerned. In the part of Canada that I'm from, that's a $300 fine for parking in a disabled spot without having the disabled placard. I feel like the higher the fine, the more likely the person is to not do it again in the future. But then I'd love to know what you all think, so comment down below. What do you think the fine should be set at in this case? Do me a quick favor and take a look down below the video. If that subscribe button's still red, it means you're actually not subscribed to the KCC channel. Please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories. This next story comes to us from Weird Stories Here. New ownership takes over and guy goes on vacation for two years due to stupid new rules. Let's jump right in. A family friend was working at the same company since he was 26, up to when he was 64, when the below started. I did get his approval to retell the story, just not include anything specific, so I'm keeping it anonymous and quite general on the specific details. Part of the problem was the laws in the country increasing the retirement age from 62 to 65 when he was in his early mid-50s, and then again from 65 to 67 when he was about 62 to 63. The old owners were a family and run the business with benefits to the employees. From everything I have heard, I think they were giving an extra vacation week after every six years at the company. So on top of the standard four weeks, he had an extra six weeks. 
Also, people had access to two weeks of home office when the job allowed them or an extra week off for those that couldn't use it. So he was getting 11 weeks off each year. As a bonus, the family owners were allowing people above 55 to use their vacation time as they desired, all at once, with about a two weeks notice which was just a friendly notice, according to the guy, or segmented or even not use it and pile it up for the retirement time. Another issue we have in our country is that when you submit retirement paperwork to the government, they take effing ages. So it is often the case that they may take over two years to calculate what to pay you and start paying you. Of course, they back pay that time, but it still is an issue. For that period, you are getting only the minimum amount. But the guy had already about 44 years of experience and a bit more ahead of him as an engineer and a well-paid one which also meant a great retirement amount. So the owners allowed for people to gather up their weeks at the end of it and take 20 to 30 weeks off while submitting their retirement paperwork. So the money being paid would last them longer when they didn't need to spend to go to work. Of course, some didn't use it, but many did. So the company gets sold because the owner saw some writing on the wall that their profiting wouldn't last more than six to seven years more and they wanted out due to old age as well. New ownership, part of some Coca-Cola subsidiary, takes over and starts removing previous rules. At the guy's position, there were three of them, him, a second colleague, and a third one. They push out the second, fire him, and the third one has a heart attack literally a week later, rest in peace. They also go and dock his pay by 15% because he's making too much for a simple engineer. The three of them held a patent for the machinery used on something specific, a second one on how to make that machinery, and a third one on the process of the production of a small but significant part. Old owner had allowed them to put the patents on them when they invented a new 30% cheaper and 75% faster way of production years ago. So suddenly he is alone on that position at 64, and the company hires six people for him to train on that position. At the same time, they give up to the end of the year for all the piled up vacation time to be claimed. Notice the wording, claimed, not used. So the guy was using between one and five weeks for the past decade. So he had gathered 87 weeks of time off, including the curtain year. But they hadn't looked at specific cases apparently. So they get him the six new people to train and they tell him that he needs to have them trained in six months he still has 2.3 to 2.5 years till retirement. So he just goes and takes 87 weeks of vacation time at once with a three hour notice on a Friday evening for the next Monday. They don't pay attention to it until the next Thursday when the CEO notices the six people sitting around all day and nobody training them. The phone calls start, then emails, then letters get added then home visits by low-ranking secretaries and such to deliver the letters, then management visiting his home. By week seven, the CEO has visited three times, but the door hasn't been opened once. His mother-in-law lives literally across the street, old woman, and him and his wife are taking care of her, so most of the time they are over there and can see everybody visiting their house. The production is actually running on itself, but no upkeep is done on that critical part of it. Week 11, he says that line one out of the two breaks down. They start visiting his house three to four times a day. Two weeks later, second line breaks down. He obviously has lots of friends inside and getting constant updates. At that point, they have only four weeks of backstock. It is December, right before Christmas, and he goes in during week 13. He says he needs to take some things from his locker room and the CEO starts yelling at him. You're stopping your time off right now. You're coming back to work to fix everything up. So he offers to come back for three days under the agreement that the entire week will be returned to him to use for time off. The CEO reluctantly agrees and tries to push him for the training. No budging, only fix things up. By Saturday, everything is fixed up and even leaves a couple of basic instructions on what needs greasing every week, and he is off again. A few weeks pass, New Year has come around and a line is broken again. He gets called back, and CEO pretends like the previous deal will be used again. He goes in for two days, 
fixes everything, explains a couple more things to the team of six, who by now have other duties not to be sitting around all day. And when he is about to leave, the CEO says, tomorrow at 8 a.m., the guy says, what? And the CEO explains, you could claim your time off by the end of last year. You just ended your claim time off, so you're losing the remaining 69 weeks. The guy is furious, and he just goes straight and reports the company to workers' rights. They are actually dumbfounded by the time off he has, and the lady serving him calls her colleagues to listen in. They laugh their butts off by his story, and they actually issue a verdict the next day. It usually takes weeks, but apparently they had too much fun with this one. He is to get all of his time off, under the previous rule, for the time accrued up before the rules changed, so he has his 69 weeks. Should be 70 due to him getting the one he worked on, renewed by their deal, but he lost that one. And he also has the six weeks from the new year. So he goes in with the verdict and gives it personally to a fuming CEO. According to the guy, steam was coming out of his ears. The CEO accepts the deal with the guy coming in for three days every five weeks off. If he is needed during his time off, tough luck. They should work to produce backstock. A full year goes by that way, and the guy is 66 at this point. He has been training the six slowly every five weeks, and he is on his last visit before he takes the last five weeks. The CEO goes and delivers personally the firing notice for the first day he will be back. He plays shocked and leaves for another five weeks. This one is a problem, because if he applies for retirement even with half a year early or less, you're losing significantly more than just that small period, and he has about 10 months ahead of him for retirement. His last five weeks expire, and he goes in to gather his stuff. Only a coffee cup was remaining. He knew this was coming, and he had taken everything over time. He gets an extremely big payout for the firing with no cause. Next day, he sends a cease and desist letter to the company for the use of the three patents. He had talked with the fired guy who had agreed with this revenge plan. He had also talked with the widow of the now dead friend and colleague as well, and had both of them on board. He had been supporting actually the widow, but he didn't say anything. I found out very recently from the other guy about it. So now the company has to stop using those machines and the method with zero notice. All the competitors have found and built and patented their own version of the same. And if they don't find a solution, it's going to cost 40% more and take about double time to produce the same part of the procedure of production. So they would need double the lines if they go and use the old method until they look for a new way. After just three weeks of looking to license the method of one of the competitors and not getting anywhere and stock being extremely low, they struck a deal with the guy. He will be an external contractor who obviously keeps the patents to his name. He will do the maintenance on his own, will be paid by the hour what he was previously making in a day, and he will be on call for maintenance while having one person there at all times for upkeep. He went and stole all six of the people he trained and hired them in his new company and put them to work back at that factory again with almost double the pay. He fully trained very quickly, and he was now getting paid a crap ton. That CEO was fired for almost stopping production. The deal was struck mere hours before the backstock ended, and he also cost the company a ton of money by firing that guy. At the funeral of the old owner, many of the old employees met up and told their different stories, and apparently, there were three more similar cases with the patent play, because the old owner treated his team extremely well but he apparently was the only one to string them on for almost two years by being out on vacation time and getting paid, and all of them had a great laugh, including the widow of the owner and his sister, who were the other two partners in the factory before it got sold. This was definitely an old school type of company because these days, they're not gonna let the workers keep the patents. They know there's way too much money sitting in those patents. So in this case, OP did exactly what I've said that people should do in a lot of previous stories that we've read. They came back as a contractor, got paid a ton of money to make things better for the company, and walked away with a smile on their face. OP, this is one of my favorite stories on Reddit. Thank you.
Check out both OPs linked in the description down below. I thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you tomorrow.